Welcome to this presentation. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is September 16th, 2024. The title of this presentation is Epigenetics, Biophotons, and Hydrogel. So we have to start first with the water molecule. This is a liquid crystal having a bent geometry with a bond angle of 104.45 degrees. Central oxygen atom having greater electronegativity compared to the hydrogen atoms. So this will then induce a spin rotation, also known as a dipole moment, equal to 1.85. So if we apply the liquid crystal or a programmable liquid crystal known as the water molecule having a resonant frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and its electron resonance, we have the ability to take DNA, RNA, and protein to then thus induce the stem cells and DNA codons to form the water into structured water, the precursor to forming new cells and body parts in the human body. This is practically described as the hydrogel. So 25% of the DNA across the human constitution is physical. 75% of the DNA is non-physical, psychologically triggered biophoton. So we know a photon is the wave particle duality of light. So when we have the environment regulating the gene expression, for example, through thoughts, beliefs, worldview, including the perception of one's physical and psychological environment, we then have the field of epigenetics. The previous genetic model was not very accurate as proven through the human genome, uh, the human genome project, I was about to say experiment. The human genome project lasted 20 years and was convinced that DNA has to be at least mostly, if not completely physical, but the genetic model was tossed aside because science is never settled. Science is a continuum of new discoveries to replace old systems. So we're talking about currency in science, not a settled science. So epigenetics is the most accurate model which correlates the energies with the materials in the human body. So psychologically triggered biophotons, an example of environment or environmental triggers are then switching on and off gene expressions, especially with repetition. So now we have the concept and actuality of the photon, which is the wave particle duality of light. So if we were to take a laser and have so much energy through that laser, we could divide that joule value into the speed of light squared to calculate the kilograms mass equivalent quantum entanglement in such a laser light system. The same principle can be applied to the luminosity, which is inherent in the biological DNA codons, for which are known as the biophotons. So the biological wave particle duality of light, the biological photon. So those thoughts, as energy or waves, entangle into physical matter. So it depends on what kind of thoughts and what kind of perceptions and what kind of thinking an individual has 
hopefully it's their own thoughts and nobody else's because the reflection of those thoughts are the quality and the integrity and nature of what new cells will form in the body good or bad depending on the thought form so then lastly we have the principle of neuroplasticity we look at the neural cortex as the not just the brain but the brain and the entire nervous system harness throughout the entire body including the junctions to all body parts so when we have enough repetition of thought forms whether they are good or bad depending on who you are we then encounter the change of those nervous system predications into neuroplasticity so if we were to take something really rigid and fixed and make it so it is malleable or fluid to an extent we then have the ability to change the neurology in the thought form state as well as the quote-unquote muscle memory which is really the skeletal nervous system memory so if you have an intellectual change as well as a hands-on together or you have a study combined with hands-on simultaneously then the neural cortex encounters the neuroplasticity to where what was once learned is now inherent so changing the human performance curve for better or for worse is very feasible depending on the thought forms incurred and especially how low the cortisol cortisol levels are kept so whenever one gets into a fight or flight state or into a fear or a panic or an anxiety state they raise their cortisol levels and then they shut down the communication between cells cells can then not heal and then you run into potential health problems so why is this so it's because water is a liquid crystal and it has an electron resonant frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and so there is both the vector and the scalar communication systems across the cells of the human body so the inventors of the cell phone were actually genetic engineering companies such as nextel and so there was the non-hertzian or non-frequency standing wave that is the scalar signal so imagine a waveform that does not oscillate it's a standing wave it will only have a magnitude but not a general direction so it then becomes a scalar signal not really a wave and then we have the switching system on off on off and so then this becomes the whole premise of an analog vector hertzian wave so why is this important it's because once the cortisol levels are at their lowest the stress levels at their lowest the non-local communication between cells is then at its highest activity so all cells in the human body are non-locally quote-unquote wirelessly connected and so let's say your brain cells understand english that means all the other cells in your body also understand that language so the language type one communicates in is directly correlating to how the physical state of an individual is forming functioning in its overall structure and function morphology so this falls into these optimized non-local non-hertzian scalar signal communication frequency and it is in the parity of the water crystalline structure i.e. 2.4 gigahertz so we've heard that before Wi-Fi is a correlation of the water's liquid crystal or crystalline state and so this is then going back to the principle of morphogenic resonance and how all life requires the water molecule the water molecule is also said to be the liquid computer so we covered the neural plasticity and then the 
biophotons which correlate to the neural cortex. So all these are a totality of interconnecting networks. So it was genetic engineering companies that improved this along with the entire electrophysics to then lead to a technological version of what the human body already does, and that is the non-local cellular communication system, and it's predicated out of the bio-quantum physics model. And so the last point to make is, here is the at the speed of light at the energetic state. So we have energy, waves, entangling, and then inducing the particle state, the neutron state, the physical state, so the wave-particle duality of light going from energy to matter, the quantum conversion, the quantum entanglement. So we have two modes, one at the speed of light, and then that's the energy, and then one below the speed of light. So you're either not the speed of light or you are at the speed of light. You can't have anything in between. So in the energetic state, as in at the speed of light, in the wave state, in the wave function, there is one dimension of space and three dimensions of time. So this is why all the cells in your body have replaced themselves, including your brain cells, your nerve cells, everything's replaced, let's say 50 years go by, but you can still remember something that happened 50 years ago just like it happened yesterday there's no time involved because you're in the three-dimensional time state when it comes to energetic and memory uh, translation past present future are all occurring simultaneously three-dimensionally but only in one linear state so that falls under the scalar communication just a magnitude no particular direction. Now when we reach the entanglement and we get take this frequency or frequency-less energetic state, let's say a non-Hertzian scalar energetic state, we reflect it into a particle, then we have the physical matter or the brain tissue or the nervous tissue, etc. And so that is functioning in the part particle state below the speed of light, and then it's business as usual back to the classical science rather than the quantum at the speed of light science. And so then we have, again, business as usual, three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. So then that's the practicality of physical life, physical reality, keeping optimized, purified water and electro electrolytes hydration and height and minimal, I would say moderate amounts of food intake, but high quality nutrition optimization of the substrate that makes up the biology, the purified water, the structured water, and then we have the 75% correlation of psychology inducing the perception of one's environment. So that environment is the physical environment around you, as well as the thoughts, beliefs, and worldview. So depending on how one perceives those environmental components, determines how high or how low the cortisol levels are. So let's say all environments are perceived as not a threat to, let's say, an individual, then their cortisol levels are going to be very low, and then their non-local cellular communication is high, and then the body goes into a very highly efficient state of healing and maintenance. But however, if one perceives their environment in a negative manner or as a threat, and it could be imagined, or it could be actual real, then they will raise their cortisol levels, and then their communication network will shut down, and then they will not heal, and they're most likely going to take a psychological negativity or quote-unquote sickness and turn that into a physical sickness. So you cannot discount a 4 to 1 ratio of psychology taking precedence over the physiology. So these are the proofs, cause and effect, and they fall under the fields of epigenetics with respect to biophotons, 
and hydrogel, i.e. the structured water of biology. Thank you for watching this presentation and have a great day.